Ladies and gentlemen, after a long time away from the mysterious and alien worlds of Fortress Craft Evolved, we have returned to begin our descent into the newest and coldest addition to the game, the Frozen Factory. Beyond that, I can't even begin to detail the amount of quality content that has been added to this sorely underrated factory building tower defense survival game since we played it last, which I believe was about a year ago. So rather than research all of the new content, I decided that we will once again begin our journey to discover and rediscover everything that Fortress Craft Evolved has become since together. So strap yourselves in for a challenging and long series, being that the Frozen Factory add-on adds on approximately three to 400 hours of gameplay. I don't know if I believe that entirely, but apparently it does. So uh, yeah, who knows what we're gonna run into here. And we'll talk more about that add-on in a bit. First of all, let's get ourselves started. We're gonna start a brand new world, of course. I've deleted all my old save games, so I can't even go back and <laughs> look. I have, I went in the game just to be sure it's still working and uh, make sure the volume uh, was adjusted and you won't believe how different it looks now. So what are we gonna call our new town? We last are the last name that we used was Deluxia Build Township Shire. <laughs> um, I think we're gonna go with Deluxoria. No, Deluxe, uh, Deluxe Evania. Deluxe Evania. Ooh, that sounds nice. Deluxe Evania. <laughs> Wonderful. So we're gonna do. Now, last time, I'll show you what we started, what, what we went with last time. So, with resource level last time, we went with scarce. Then we did power level plentiful. And then we did conveyor speed slow. And we finished the game in approximately 200, 200 plus hours, just a little over 200 hours. Now, it, the part time apparently for this is 680 hours without Frozen Factory. With Frozen Factory in these settings, 2,040 hours? What? What? I mean, it'd probably be far less than that because I did finish the game in about 200 and some hours last time, but 1,400 more hours? That is insane. That's insane. So we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna go that intense. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna bring the power level to scarce and we're gonna go with better resources this time. So that's the one step above scarce. That should, okay, so that reduced the time to 720 hours for a playthrough, that, that's madness. But I think we can probably do way better than that, I think. Uh, personally, I think. So everything else here looks good. So we've got resource level plentiful. This will be the first time I've ever played with plentiful resources. Now that does not mean we get more resources in the world. It means that we can process resources and can get more out of them. I believe by double what scarce is. So it'll it'll provide us with a lot more resources to get ahead faster. So that's good, but we're gonna do it with, uh, I've never played with power level scarce, which means I think we get half the amount of power will greatly slow down the uh, scarce power, much lower power. So I believe we get half the amount of power. For example, for each piece of coal, we get half of the amount of power from a piece of coal than we would have before. So that's interesting. We're gonna play with conveyor speed slow. We did the same thing last time. It makes it makes the this, this slow, painful conveyor belts very, very slow and very, very painful. Day night cycle, we're gonna leave on as normal. The mob difficulty, normal mobs. And death mode is going to be clumsy once again. I'm gonna regret that. But uh, yeah, clumsy mode was kind of fun. So it just prevents me from being stupid and, and being careless. So whenever I die, of course, I'm gonna lose all of my inventory. We're gonna have to go collect it. It's not a big deal at the beginning, but later on when we're dealing with uh, environments that are treacherous, unless you have all of your suit upgrades, it is it does actually make a huge difference. Rush mode, uh, we're not gonna do rush mode. Rush mode is uh, rush mode enabled. This mode challenges, challenges you to rebuild another orbital power transmitter and fully charge it within the minimum amount of time. Yeah, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be rushed. I don't wanna be rushed on this. I want to be able to take our time and enjoy it. Flatland, this is uh, this is something related to Frozen Factory. Flatland mode will be unlocked once you have successfully killed a cryoplasm spawner. As far as I know, that is part of the Frozen Factory. When you uh, when you thaw out an area in Frozen Factory, it creates this cryoplasm. Apparently, I've never seen it. I've never experienced it. So that'll be exciting. But we're, Flatland is off for now. Apparently you can have a flatland though. That's kind of neat. Uh, care package is something else that we can't change, but care package will be unlocked once you have successfully built a climate control center. Interesting. And I believe the climate control center is something that you build in the cold zones within Frozen Factory to uh, adjust the climate, of course, of those cold zones. And I think as soon as it starts to warm up, then this cryoplasm starts to creep in. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll get there, ladies and gentlemen. Away we go. Let's create a brand new world. I'm so excited. I've missed this game so much, although it is, like I said, it's been I've, just about a year, over a year since we played last. 
So I am going to have to learn the controls again because I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Oh, here we go. Wonderful. Oh, look at this. Yes. Peaceful trip to the space station. Everything's perfect. Life is great. And uh-oh. Oh, balls. Not again. Not again. Every time I come to the space station, it gets hit by an asteroid. Ah, crap. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, nearest planet. Oh, look at the space station in the background. Or the, it was a shipyard. A shipyard in the background. Very nice. And I wandered through the weird and lurid landscape of another planet, War of the Worlds. It's a great quote, actually. Uh, okay, so uh, there has been some changes to the tutorial at the beginning, and I don't think there was a way to turn it off. I would have enjoyed turning it off because I don't think we need it, but we're going to read through it anyway. You have survived the initial crash, and Arthur sacrificed himself to make you a tiny survival environment. Arthur will now explain a few of your base's features. The force field will disappear when this is completed. Your CPH, or the central power hub, is the center of your base and will provide a small amount of power when fed resources. Look at your CPH and press E to access it. You can then click and add resources defeated some coal. So I guess we start off with some coal. Yes, a little bit of coal, add resources. Your PSBs, or power storage batteries, are your primary way of storing power for your base. Locate your PSB in your base now, then highlight it. Pressing Q will draw power from the PSB to your suit, in which turn, in, <laughs> which in turn will keep you warm. Uh, so PSB, power storage battery, uh, right here. Ore extractors, OE. Ore extractors collect ore whilst you are busy doing other things and require power. Locate your OE and access it with E again to feed it 200 power and it'll work for over 8 minutes. Huh? We start- Oh, because we're playing on Plentiful, we start with a coal mine. I forgot about that. The last time I played on Pen Plentiful was before our first series. Uh, on YouTube. I, I think I played with Plentiful once just to experiment with it, and uh, yeah, I haven't gone back and played with it since. So, interesting. So yeah, when you're playing on Plentiful, you start with the Coleman. That's kind of cool. Um, so we can add power. Perfect. It's been a while, man. It has been a while. Storage hoppers store and process items automatically. Your machines will take resources from or give to a storage hopper. Locate your storage hopper and press Q to empty it. Remove the coal that has been mined. Oh, and we start with storage hoppers, too. That's something you don't get when uh, you play in scarce. You can ping to locate known or own unknown items in the world. Once an unknown item is found, you can then scan it. Find an unscanned item now, highlight it, and hold right mouse button until it's scanned. I think we can just scan the ground here. Oh, it's all coming back. Once scanned, unknown items can be researched. Locate and highlight your research station, then press E to interact and complete the research. Researching earns points to unlock new technologies. Uh, that is the research station there, I believe. Yeah. Oh, remember this, guys? Oh, remember this. It's, this is a long journey. Oh, my God. Okay, so power to re uh, power required to research 70. We have 862. We have a coal mine. So we have power. We have a consistent, uh, consistent, steady source of power right away, which is very, very nice. So we can process this. Arthur has helped you through the start of your... Uh, survival mission. Now it's time to say thank you. Head to the crafting plant, select it, press E, and then make a power core for Arthur. So I'm really excited to see, oh, I'm really excited to see what the world looks like now. Apparently it's changed quite a bit. Uh, so how do we make things? Oh, that's right. That's right. Power, logistics, mining, power storage, power transmission, logistics, storage, Arthur upgrades. Uh, okay, cool. And defenses and consumables like torches I remember so we're gonna make a power core for Arthur oh right we started off with two copper bars excellent you've got a few storage hoppers laser power transmitters and conveyor belts left over really locate the hollow terminal uh, terminal around the CPH this shows you an ideal miniature automation setup place your machines there that is completely new I've never seen that whoa dude oh that's right yes this was part of the game before you were uh when you plan plentiful, you start off with just a few extra bits and bobs, like uh, some conveyor belts. So you can just go boom, 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 and then place them. It's you know even starting with storage hoppers, actual storage hoppers, uh, storage hoppers is a huge advantage. And uh, oh, and a laser transmitter too, laser power transmitter. Oh, that's right. And R to rotate. Yes, there we go. Very nice. Now we are uh, we have full automation for our coal power plant. We've got power coming in from the RPSB on the CPH, which is being powered by the coal plant. And then, of course, we are powering the coal plant with the CPH. Very nice. Very nice automation to start off with. Oh, 
Place hoppers next to... Oh, we, we have two more. We have three more hoppers. Holy crap. These The reason these storage hoppers are so valuable is because they, they are made with iron and you don't start off with iron very easily. Anyway, smelting automation. Automation is going to be the key to success. Your smelter can interface with adjacent hoppers of any type. However, if you're not specific with your instructions, then all sorts of bad things could happen. Set the permissions now to have an one add-only hopper and one remove-only hopper. Put ore into the remove-only hopper and ingots will be placed into the add hopper. Add-only hopper. That's right. That's right. So if I change this... Oh, they've changed this too. Used to used to just click on it and it would just change it, but now you can go to a little sub menu here. So you can set this. This is going to be remove only, which means whatever I put in here, it'll remove whatever I put in here, but it won't be able to add anything to this hopper unless it's via conveyor belt, and then this one will be add only. So we put the ore in here, the ore will get processed, turned into ingots, and put into here. Interesting. Very cool. So that's the Wow, look at how different this looks. This looks like night and day. Look at the environment. Whoa, this looks more alien than it ever did. What are those? What on earth are those? Oh, so cool. So I guess there's no trees anymore. It looks like they've replaced the trees with these. I wonder if these are sort of the same thing. Can I scan these? Yes, I can. Very nice, new scan complete. Ah, excellent. Oh, new plants! Look at that! Oh no, that's the same. I've, no, that's different than what there was there before. Very cool. But look at the environment. Look at oh man, this looks so good. This looks so so good. Yeah, so we scanned that one already. Ah, uh, big rocks. What can we do with the big rocks? Can we mine the rocks for materials? Maybe. New scan complete. So we have three more scans to pro process. Okay. Scan two more objects. Okay, so let's go scan. You know what? I'm just going to go process those two scans. We'll go research them right away. Let's get those out of the way. Um, e, and then, right. So 350 power. We've got max power already. Wow. Having that coal mine to start, what a huge advantage. So we're going to process that. Glow tubes. These massive glowing tubes appear to contain fibers that could be useful. Totally new. And this plant, I, an undergrump. An undergrump. This plant. This doesn't appear be here, appear to be very useful yet. An undergrump. Interesting. And then we've got large rocks, large surface rocks containing traces of ore. We can mine the rocks for ore. Very cool. Um, do we want to research anything else here? Maybe go for suit upgrades right away. I don't know what we need to build suit upgrades, but I remember that being very very important at the in the early game. In the early game, let's see if we can go. Suit upgrades. Oh, there's nothing under that yet. I think we'd actually have to research a little bit more. So we go to recipes. That's right. Suit power pack. That's really, really important. So we'll research that right away. We'll research the solar power cell. I don't care about the headlight. I'm going to research the threat scanner. I want to build everything in this game again. Um, there's been so many changes and improvements. Like, remember there was a robot that didn't work the last time? I'm, I'm sure that, he's, that they did work with that uh, solar power cell. Uh, it needs tin bars and copper bars. Okay, so we need to get some... Oh, and this... The suit power pack, which is really important, requires lithium and iron. That's right. So that's going to be a while from now. First thing we need to do... So let's do a ping unknown. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there's a lot of something... Oh, right. It's probably just rough-hewn rock right underneath us. Let's grab a scan of that really quickly. How do I go back to my... Gun is X. That's right. So we can go down like so. Right, okay, so we got that rough hewn rock. Oh, so center mouse button to select what, so what's in your hand. Oh, okay, let's finish that up. There we go. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be a big hole. That looks awkward. Okay, we'll fix that in a bit. Let's go scan that. Unknown material, rough hewn rock, excellent. Now we should be able to do another scan and see some other stuff. Ooh, look at that. Wow, okay, so hold on, scan again. So we've got. This is only unknown ore, so it looks like we've got something right here. Look at this. Actually, there's something right underneath the basin. It's probably more coal. But you know what? Let's go down and uh, let's go down, I don't know, about here? Sure. And see what this is. Going down. G to drop a uh, glow stick. Very nice. Oh! Uh, kind of looks like tin, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, that looks like tin. Uh, which way is the base? Uh, hold on, how do I grapple? I forgot how to grapple. Oh, that's right now, I remember. Excellent. 
Okay, so the base is this way. Let's build some stairs going down to this. Uh, it's all coming back to me, folks. It's all coming back to me. That's right. Excellent. We're going to build some stairs so it's nice and easy to get in and out of this place. I'm a little slow off the start here because it's been a while, but uh, it'll all come back to me fairly quickly. It's already coming back pretty quick. So we already have a uh, tin mine. Fantastic. A tin mine. Away we go. We've got a mine. We'll place that down, and I think we need to power that up. Wonderful. Look at that. We're on our way already. Beautiful. Right, so Arthur has his own power source and he can keep feeding me uh, power while we're doing stuff like that. Perfect, so let's go grab power from our PSB. Recharge, excellent. I think Arthur has a solar panel on him or something. I don't remember. All right, let's see if we can find some copper right away. Let's go, oh, uh, before we do that, we better uh, research the tin. We'll grab that and we'll go and research that so that we're not scanning for tin again. Process, okay, so there's our tin ore, fantastic. And let's see if we can find something else. Ooh, so there's something over here and something over here. This looks fairly close to the surface. Oh, look at, you know what? If we can get surface copper, that would be great. Hold on, plant. Ooh, let's scan that. That looks interesting. Interesting. Interesting new plants. I love it. Look at this. Man, this just looks gorgeous. Looks so nice. Look at the... Look at the the moon. Look at that. That just looks amazing. Oh, it's nighttime. We gotta we gotta move. I'm 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 just smelling the roses when I should be uh, getting things in order here. Oh, look at that copper right on the surface. How do you like that? Oh, wonderful. Good start. I think what we'll do is we're gonna build a path. So we're gonna go X and we're gonna build a way to go straight. Oh, what? Coal. Look at that. Oh, we found some coal right away, right on the surface here. Wonderful! Wow, this is a great start, guys. Beautiful. Did we just did, did we just pick that plant? Right click. What? You can harvest plants? There's there's farming in Fortress Craft now. What? What is happening? So can I actually pick the plant to itself? I can. Interesting. So does that give me something new that I can scan or? So what am I getting from those plants? I have no idea. Um, we might have to research that. It might, I might have to go back. Okay, so let's get our copper mine up. Let's see, can we build a copper mine like right here? Uh, where, hold on. <laughs> where is that gap that I just made? Oh, uh, look at that copper. The, actually, that uh, coal is kind of in the way, isn't it? So let's see if we can build a set of stairs going up here so that we can get in and out of this place fairly quickly. Oh. Okay. Okay, so there's our gap. All right, so let's put... Let's make sure that we've got stairs going all the way up. Oh, that worked perfectly. Look at that. Beautiful. There we go. Excellent. So let's get our second mine down here. Uh, can we put it down... Oh. You know what? Actually, that'll work out great. Let's put that back there. Let's put our mine right here. Fill that up with some power. Beautiful. So we've got our copper mine up and our tin mine up. We need to get some automation going as quickly as possible because I'm lazy. And well, it's not really about being lazy. It's about being uh, efficient. So if I remember correctly, oh yeah, that filled up super fast. Now, if I remember correctly, I think it was shift Q or control Q would eject whatever's in there without having to open this up. Although opening it up is convenient. You can do that from any distance too, right? But I just want to see something. So I'm going to let that fill up with some tin ore. And I think it was, was it shift Q? Nope. Uh, control Q? I think, I think that worked. Yes. Yeah, so sh control Q will eject whatever is in the mine. Now we do, we already have a coal mine. So I think I'm going to use, we've got one more mine. I think I'm going to use that with the copper. We're gonna get an extra copper mine. Now, the reason I'm gonna do that is because copper is important for building the basic conveyor belts, if I remember correctly. We'll have to take a look at that in a second, but I'm pretty sure we need more copper. I'm just gonna do rather than research here. <laughs> so we're gonna build a second, whoops, second copper mine right here. We'll fill that up with some power. I think, I think that's the right choice. And we, oh, we've got an extra store topper. Why don't we use that right away? Let's put that uh, right here. These store toppers are super valuable at the beginning. Um, that way, uh, that way I'm not worried about these filling up too high or filling up too much and then not getting 
or not being efficient, right? We want to be as efficient as possible. So, two copper mines going. Do we have any copper? I think we're, we're going to set up our bars really quickly here. Let's make uh, F7 is going to be for ore. Oh, we still don't have... Oh, we haven't researched copper. That's why. Uh, research, process. There we... Oh, bobbleberry. We don't have any copper in our inventory yet. How's that possible? I thought we... Uh, I thought we grabbed this, apparently. Oh, unknown material. I have to open the handbook. It really wants me to open the handbook. There we go. I open the handbook. Oh, it's putting it in here. Okay, 22. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Okay, so now we've got some copper. Let's go research that. So, a new material process. Perfect. Copper ore. Now, let's set up our bars. So, F7 is going to be for ore. F1 is going to be general for now. For now. I Yeah, that's fine. And then F2 is probably going to be power. No, I'm going to make F3 power. We've got some laser power transmitters to start, too. Oh, well, isn't that convenient? So, uh, and, and some PSBs. Wow, what a great start that is. When you play with Plentiful, that is amazing. So we could theoretically, we can already set up a uh, power for these guys. I kind of put that in the wrong spot then. Oh, I, d I hadn't planned on that. I hadn't, I hadn't counted on that at all. Uh, what we could do... <laughs> Where do we put our... Uh... I guess it doesn't really matter. We could put two down here. I don't know. Let's just... Let's get some um, conveyor belts going. Uh, we need to check our tin mine. Tin mine will be easier to deal with. Let's go deal with that first. I might have to move things around on our copper mine there to make that a little bit more convenient for doing our power system. I hadn't planned on having any power systems yet. Like, uh, laser power transmitters and PSBs right away. Uh, it's kind of a... Ooh, wow. That filled up super fast. We need another... Uh, or we need to just get this automated right away. Uh, very dark down here. So let's throw that down and let's maybe build this out. We'll throw a... Actually, we could do the... Uh... Do we even need to do a power storage block here? I don't think so. Not for one mine. What we do need to do is add... It's been a while, it's been a while, so bear with me here. We need to add a block there. Actually, we'll make it up a little bit higher here. So we'll go up by three or four. And we're going to do a laser right here and have that pointed down. Excellent. So that is fine, but then we have to feed some power into that laser. So I think if we go... Man, it has been a while. Holy crap. Uh, one, is that right? Yes. And then we have this guy. Oh, I did that incorrectly. So this guy will have a laser going up like so. We're going to bring this back down. Bring this over here. Right? Yes. One, and that can go like so. And then this guy. Whoops. I, I, if I remember correctly, you could actually have things floating too. So we could theoretically have a laser. Hold on, let's build this. Oh no, that's right. So we could have a laser. Although I, d I don't like doing that, but uh, just for the sake of keeping things looking clean. There we go. That looks nice, sort of. It doesn't look natural, but it sure looks it looks better than having some extra blocks, unnecessary blocks. So now our tin mine is completely powered independently, uh, uh, or powered from the base anyway. Excellent. So let's add power here. Perfect. Oh, not add power. Sorry. Collect the tin ore. My bad. Let's go over here. It is dark right now. That means we're not getting any solar power from the base. But it should be getting it should be getting coal fed into it. I think it, it periodically feeds coal into the base as it needs it, so that's that's okay. Let's go back and check our copper mines. Fortunately, we have the the storage hopper there. Wonderful! Oh man, I've missed this game so much. I think what we're gonna do we've got some we've got some ore now. Let's go back to the base and let's see if we can smelt some of that ore. Now, since we're playing on Plentiful, if I remember correctly. 
on Plentiful, you get... I think all we have to do is feed the hopper. So how do we feed the hopper? We go to F7, and I think it's T. There we go, feeding the hopper, and it'll automatically feed the ore into the uh, smelter. Fantastic. So every four copper ore gives us one bar. We gotta wait for that to heat up, so temperature 290. Yeah, so it's gonna take a second. So let's put whatever we can into all of our tin in there too. T, there we go. So it should start to process some bars for us. Wonderful. In the meantime, let's start planning out how we're going to set up our conveyor system. I think, uh, hmm. Oh, we still have that, some of that tin on us because uh, there wasn't enough room in that. Yeah, so the storage is full. So, so every, so I think when you're playing on scarce, it was every eight copper ore or every eight ore gives you one bar. So yeah, this is literally double the speed on that front, which is kind of nice actually. That will make the uh, the series go by a little bit faster. It'll be a little bit easier for me because I spent so much time on my own doing stuff that, uh, you know, you guys actually, I mean, for those of you that did watch my last series, I mean, very little of it was actually uh, recorded for you guys. So much time was spent on my own just doing stuff because it took so long to get the resources to do it. So I'm wondering, Maybe we should just bring this line directly underneath the base, right? So let's keep it nice and bright here for you guys. There is a headlamp that we can... Oh! Copper... Or the, uh... The coal's down here, so that's not gonna work. Let's... Um, let's... Go up one here. Oh. I wonder if this coal is all the way... How inconvenient that is. It's hard to see, I apologize, guys. Oh, so we might be able to get through the coal right there. Okay, so let's do... Let's build a little stair here. Excellent. So we're going to try and get through... Oh, coal in the way. <laughs> Freaking fantastic! Man. Okay, hold on. Let's... We'll go around it, I guess. I was kind of hoping that we could bring a line right underneath the base. But I don't know if we're going to be able to do that. We might have to come up and above anyway. So there's coal all the way down across like so. Let's go up here. Apologize for it being so dark. It is nighttime and I don't have a headlamp on right now. Or I don't have a headlamp technology, actually. I don't even have that technology. Okay, so we can go underneath. Okay, so that's going to work. Excellent. I would like this line to actually go back down again after it goes around that coal. So there's coal right here. We're gonna go underneath the coal, like so. We'll just go right underneath. Oh, we can't go there. <laughs> Man, how inconvenient. There's a piece of coal right there too. So I guess what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our life simple. We're going to build the line on top of that. just underneath the base so that we can get into that ore refinery. And that way this line isn't sticking up and we don't have to compete with the tin line that we're going to build either. So let's go back up here. Let's see how our... We've got some copper bars. Excellent! We've got some copper bars. Uh, we don't have any tin yet. So let's put the rest of our tin in there. And let's go grab any tin. Oh yeah, that fills up super fast, doesn't it? Hmm. I think you can fit more in one of the... I think the mines actually have more storage in this mode too, in plentiful mode. So that's kind of convenient. Let's... <coughs> pardon me. Let's throw that in here. And let's go grab some more copper. Copper is mar far more important than tin right now. I believe... Actually, let's go to the manufacturing. Um, I believe we can make two types of conveyors right now. We can make the basic conveyor, which is one copper bar for five basic conveyors. The basic conveyors are very slow, but they work, right? They're, it's a good start. Or we can build the basic uh, or the actual conveyor belts, which actually move at a pretty decent speed to start off with. And then we've got the upslope and the downslope and the turntable. Wow, we start with the turntable. We start with the conveyor belt filter too. I don't think we, st and the piston. Wow, we start with a lot of stuff that we didn't start with before, wow. Okay, crazy. So, I we could go for the regular conveyor belts. It's just tin and but that, you know what? I'm going to start I'm going to these are so much faster, but I think we're going to start with the basic conveyor belt just to get things Thank expedited. You. Ladies and gentlemen, we are out of time already on our very first episode. Time goes by super fast when you're trying to figure this stuff out, but wow, we got some sort of some basic automation going. At least we've got some power 
uh, automated. Uh, we just, we next episode, we'll definitely get some, some of our first conveyors laid down and start figuring out how we're going to get down and grab some iron because iron is going to be so important, especially for the early game here. But man, does this ever look beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye, bye, bye.